Hello. How's it going? Yes, I'm back. It happens. I know. It's a rare occurrence. And I come nowhere near my schedule, especially recently. Anyway, I'm getting ready to go run some errands. So I figured, what the heck, we'll just talk. Um, for anybody who's interested, yes, I did, in fact, win the challenge for National Novel in a month. I did it. I was over the, the minimum word count by 134 words. So that was 50,134 words in 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of words. Now, from here on out, I spend the time till the next one editing. <laughs> because when you're doing, just trying to get the words down, you don't think about it. You just do it. Anyway, let's see. Speaking of just do it, let me get started here. I've got my primer on. And I've got my eye primer on. And... Let's see where we go. I picked up this interesting palette from Profusion because I was interested in some of the shades that are in the Stone Cold Box palette by ColourPop. But the ColourPop didn't entirely fit into my budget. And this one from Profusion was seven bucks so eh, it'll either work or it won't it's got some of the shades similar to stone cold fox but we'll see where it goes Do, do, do. So, what else been going on with you guys? You know, let me know in the comments. Um, I have in fact been inducted into Sigma Tau Delta, which is the International English Honor Society. Um, got an email from my college congratulating me on high academic achievement. I've still got until about the first quarter of 2020 before I'm finished because I'm doing this as a part-time student online since it's Southern New Hampshire University. And when I started, I was in West Virginia. And then we moved to Florida. And then we moved to Oregon. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not one that you could keep up with significantly. Um, unless you were online. Because I didn't live in Nashua, New Hampshire. Or, or, no, Manchester, New Hampshire. So... You get what you get. But I love doing my classes online. I really do. Makes it a lot easier for me to schedule being on time with my classes. You know? It's just one of those. Do they do? Now, I kind of had in mind to talk a little bit about, because I talked about books, and I talked about an author that I really like on one of the last just chatty things. And 
I figured I'd talk about some of the stuff that I don't like about the self-publishing books. Because, yeah, well, why not? Now, I'm not going to name, name, name names. I'm going to mention just the issues. Because, for one thing, I don't want somebody coming back and giving me hoo-ha about, you know, my writing in particular for trying to sue me for saying things. And since my writing, other than a few short stories here and there, and some poetry is not actually out in public, I don't want people coming back and going, hey, you got no business talking about nothing. I have my opinion. Now, one of the ones that, because I go through the free books for electronic readers. I do that a lot because you find a lot of newer published authors. And yeah, some of them are the self-publishes, but you find some really good authors that way. That's how I found Ashley Capes, the guy that I talked about in that previous video. That's how I found him, is one of his books was on an e-reader app and it was free so i said come here baby and i read it and i loved it and i've been spending my money on his books ever since now they're not terribly expensive which you know makes it easier you know we're talking about between four and five dollars for the book after the freebie so, you know, they're not, you know, leaving you a freebie and then gouging your eyes out for you to get the next book, which I appreciate. But there's some of them on these, you know, do-it-yourself publish, and I'm not going to flap about do-it-yourself publish because I'm liable to go that way. And again, you get some incredible writers through do-it-yourself or whatever and through the free books. But in some cases, you run into the most atrocious writers. One of the things that I hate with some of the writers is called the Mary Sue or the Gary Stew, which is a protagonist who seems to just know bloody everything. And even though they're not the type of character that would normally do something heroic, they do something heroic that saves the hero person in the story. And they not only know everything, they come by it by really strange ways of getting to know it. You know, with Harry Potter and Hermione, she read everything she could find. She studied everything she could find. She just, she knew a lot because she did. And you knew how she did. There's one book in particular. My little dog is stuck behind the camera cable. There. Now, go away. <clears throat> You're not stuck anymore. Go away. Um, you, 
you start off with a character who is supposed to have been locked up in a prison type cage who has to be rescued and she is rescued but if somebody doesn't know something she does because hey she dreamed about it. Okay, fantasy story, few dreams. And then she saves all of the these these high power um, fantasy characters who are supposed to be like, you know, demigods and superheroes and all this other stuff. Saves them. Because this entity that she's supposedly been talking to that you haven't heard about until now told her exactly what to do. And then we get this, oh, yeah, he's always been around. And it's like, okay... The other problem I have with this particular storyline, it's not that, you know, she's got, knows everything. It's that you learn about she knows everything way beyond where she shows this intelligence. And it's always, you know, even though she was locked up, in this cage from the time she was two. She just she just knows everything and knows exactly what to do with everything and is always saving somebody else's butt and is living for the praise. You know, just living for it. My little dog is driving me nuts. He's never where he wants to be. I still think he's a, a cat in a dog suit. Because, you know, cats, always on the wrong side of the door. Constantly on the wrong side of the door. It's their thing. And now he wants back on the other side again. Driving me to distraction, little man. Now, the other thing that I have a problem with, with this particular storyline, is that... Okay, she's been locked up for blinking ever. From the time she was two. The only person she ever sees is her mom. Because her mom comes in and feeds her whenever she feels like it. And since this chick is on the paranormal scale, she doesn't really need to eat that often, you know, no more than once a month or so to stay alive. So sometimes mom will withhold food until she's right at the edge. And then she'll come in and feed her. And I'm going, hmm, isn't this special? Now, you can't really blame her that when she finally gets rescued, she calls her mom everything but sweetheart <clears throat> i mean we have b words we have c words we have all manner of foul language now me if that was my mom and it kept me locked up like that yeah i'd have given her a mouthful however this child again is supposed to have been locked up 
from the time she was two and only has spoken with her mother, who is highly offended by this form of speech that the girl is using. But she knows how to cuss like a sailor properly. She's got, got inflection and content and form down. It's another one of those radical dream things. Like I said, I can understand her being PO'd by her parent for doing this. I got no problem with that part. The problem that I'm having with this bit is that she knows all these words from one of her mystical entities that's been getting through the cage bars but can't get her out until these other people show up. And of what use is teaching the child this stuff? I don't get it. But then later on, when our lead character is starting to get interested in her rescuers as something other than a rescue. I mean, we've got some really crude words going on earlier where she's chewing out her parent. But then you get to the sexy fun times part, and all of a sudden, she loses her ability to communicate in that manner. All of a sudden, Miss Thang gets a tingly feeling in her lady bits. And I'm going, excuse me? <laughs> what happened to your normal vernacular when it came to this? What happened to it? Now, when she's describing male anatomy, we are back to the very specific forms of rather less socially, publicly appropriate. But I just don't get it. I really don't. We've gone from Sing like a sailor, and some things that would make a sailor blush, to tingling lady bits, and then back to crude beyond words, and then, you know, and we just keep jumping back and forth between absolute crudity. Let us see how this works. To, you know, the demure virgin kind of noises. And supposedly, this chick is a quote-unquote demure vir virgin before she gets rescued. And I'm going, we got that part. I'm good with that bit. I can deal. I can handle. But she just... It's just weird. The whole thing is just weird. Dog, if you don't settle down... Don't you noof at me. I'm looking for one of my other brushes. Here, brushy, brushy. I've got a different. 
art style of eyebrow brush, but it's currently playing hide and go. There it is. Hide and go peekies. I was trying this eye gel stuff. And I'm not sure I like it. I just really am not sure how impressed I am. But if all else fails, I'll powder it and knock it down. Now this is just using what's left on the brush from the first one. Okay, from now on, it's teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny. Take some of the excess off. Okay, that's some better. I'll clean it up with some other stuff. But it's the character goes back and forth like that the entire time. And I'm going, could we possibly get a grip? Could we make up our minds? And in the meantime, she's still running around, saving everybody, knowing exactly what to do, and can handle any weapon you want to hand her. And I'm going, guys, really? Could we get a serious grip here? So we not only have the quote-unquote Mary Sue, or Gary Stew, those are kind of rude code names for this kind of character. And she's running around doing all this stuff and the quote-unquote supposed heroes are now like just flabbergasted. They don't understand it. They don't know what's going on. But they all fall at her feet giving her the praise and thanks that she is craving. And they're just handing it out left, right, and center. And I'm going, guys, have you no dignity whatsoever? You're enabling the crazy chick. And I'm going, obviously... The writer had an issue or two at some point that she's doing this. And yeah, writers' histories make their way into stories routinely. But I don't know, that's just weird. All the way around. Weird. Do 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 do. And next comes my other, some of my other pet peeves when it comes to self-publishing. Could somebody please remind people to do an actual, not just spell check, but word check, please. No, really, just please. 
There are people who routinely use words that they think are correct, but they just sound correct to the naked ear. They are not the same word. You hear it a lot in political speech, too, when you've got somebody that's, you know, one of the local um, group leaders or something who thinks they're trying to sound smarter by using bigger words, and all they do is end up confusing people because they use the wrong word. And in the writing stuff, you sometimes get somebody who the story has been otherwise pretty good, but you're talking about somebody who was somebody's ancestor and they stick descendant in instead of ancestor or something similar or they put in work literally they do the the sound likes They do their phononyms. And the word sounds right, but it's not. In some cases, it makes absolutely no sense. If you actually know the word, you can usually figure out what they were trying to say, taking the sentence context. But not always. It depends. Well, like I said, most of that is somebody who's trying to use upscale words that they're not as familiar with as they would ra should rather be when they're using them. And it just, it's annoying. Because it throws you off. Because you're going, what the heck? They're what? Alrighty. We'll see how that goes from here. Do, 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 do. Stick a little powder on my mug. Press it in, press it in, press it in, press it in. your spell checker to spell a word correctly. Your spell checker doesn't tell you you've used the wrong word. Wordos or missing words. If you write a story, 
about the 30th or 40th time you're going over it for edit, you're going to start reading words in the line that don't actually exist. On, at, they, there, a lot of those. That happens pretty much to everybody. But unless you've got at least a quote unquote beta reader or an editor, you very likely are going to send your work out with that error. Editors can oftentimes help you with the issue of phononyms and other such slip-ups. Some people will not use beta readers or editors despite how useful they are to the process. They won't use them because those people will also point out things like Mary Sue. Mary Sue, Gary Stew, all of that stew. And that messes up some people's desire to work with somebody to help them with their writing as part of the polishing process because if they pay attention to what these people are saying and tone their story back some so that Miss Mary Sue is not so prevalent, not so blatant, It, it messes with their concept of what they want their story and their character to be. Regardless of whether or not it would be better if it wasn't. So, you know, the whole thing is just out of control on some stuff. Then you get some people who are doing the self-publishing thing that they're doing a series. Doing a series. And let me tell you, you get some of the boxed sets of series that occasionally come out as a freebie or like a dollar ninety nine or something like that. They're trying to get you um, hooked on their writing and then you'll you can pick up some of their newer series or whatever. When now this happens a lot because I happen to like shifter novels. You know, shapeshifter things. It's one of my quote-unquote guilty pleasures, shapeshifter romance. With some of the shapeshifter romances, when they're coming out in a series, do yourself a favor, don't buy the box set. Unless you don't mind realizing that the sex scene in book one is identical to the sex scene in book two, which is identical to the sex scene in book three, which is identical ad nauseum. Because let me tell you, that happens a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot more than I care to think about. And if you've got the box set, instead of buying the individual books one at a time with some space between, 
it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. It really is. It's going to stand out and jump up and smack you right in the face that that is what is going on here. That this person who is doing the writing has literally, and I mean step for blinking step, Use the same scene over and and it doesn't matter if the location has changed. There's the first they did this and the first the next they did that and if it's a female writer, let me tell you the nails will be all worshipful of the female form. And take a lot of care to make sure that she is pleasured all the hoo-ha before anybody else gets any. And I'm like, guys, guys, I understand you're wanting to, to portray these shapeshifters as something beyond normal and average a bit more than um, any other human. But do you think Think you could give them all their own personality and lovemaking style. Do they have to be identical? Just ask it. Just ask it. Let that dry down just a bit. And then I hate that itch. And then I don't know why I decided on blue other than it just was what was under my hand when I reached it. But I'm putting blue under here. Now my dogs are arguing on the bed. Hello, Lolly. Hello, Finnegan. Finnegan has decided he needs to groom Lolly. And Lolly has decided she's had enough. She's going, yeah, thanks anyway, but no thanks. So she has done, popped out the door. And then she came back in going, Mom, why are you talking about me? What I do? And it's like, it's not what you did, girlfriend. I'm just talking about you. People like to hear about my doggies because they're cute and they're adorable. Cute and adorable. A little of that, a little of this. Get back into the palette, do the under eye a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't need lots. Get a little smaller. Put 
some of that shade that I tapped into the center under here. And then I'm going to grab up some of the gray color I put out here and just drag that down a little with the fluffy brush. Give it a little touch of smoke. So yeah, I like fantasy stories and I don't mind serials in fantasy stories because you know, you've built a world You've built the rationalization for the types of characters. You've put scenarios together that are bringing these people together when they're supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, do you think we could work on everybody having their own personality and not just you know some things about their personality i want to see a lot more things about their personality that is just them really just them most of the ones in this series that I'm talking about, it's like even though they're very close to each other, they call each other brother and all this other stuff. It's like, do you think just maybe we could give them enough of a separation that they don't all have sex the same way? I think it would be pleasant to give them a little more separation like that. <sighs> we should be kind to them. I don't know why I do this, I just always have. <clears throat> okay, now, I'll take a little bit of the highlighter and see if that'll be, yeah, should be blingy enough. I'm just doing errands.
Now, I don't hate series because, like it or not, what I intended to be a standalone in a novel has already decided it wants to be a series. So I had to come up with a series name on top of everything else. And yes, I'm practicing. Trying to get the left hand more used to doing this stuff. So I can do it without twisting my hands and arms around. Anyway. Anyway, that's some of my pet peeves. And I want to do something different with my eyelashes. No, I'm not putting the falsies on. I don't have any short enough currently to fit behind my glasses. I gotta order some more. However, Airway Studios has color mascara. It's a dollar. And now my husband is calling the dogs. I don't care. I'll let him call the dogs. And let's see. Yeah, I, I need to go back to doing the serum stuff on my eyelashes. Because I'm losing them again. Dang it. But, yeah. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. But this stuff does pretty well. And it doesn't feel clumpy. And it doesn't look bumpy. But yeah, I definitely got to go back to doing my eye serum, eyelash serums again. This is one of the problems with the get ready with me's. Is you've got people doing stuff and it makes it a little more difficult to edit it out. Because you're talking about something, and all of a sudden something else comes in. So, like I said, I don't know how well you can see it, but from here, it works pretty well. And for a dollar, it's like, come on, how often are you going to use color mascara of one particular color to make it worthwhile to pay a lot of money for a color mascara when you can get one for a dollar. So, there's that bit. Let me grab a lippy over here. The Santi. This is one of the ones I got from one of the subscription bags. Power Oils Lip Gloss. The shade is Super Mom. 
I like it. Pretty good. Put that there, so I remember to take it with me. Grab out this so I can put it on. Yeah, now this is a necklace and a bracelet that have been kind of locked together a little bit. Because the necklace and the bracelet were each actually too short for the original application, since I'm not a small person. And Locking them together gave me a pretty decent length of necklace. Yes, I have been cleaning up my stuff. I'm still not completely done with rearranging things. I got to get my Christmas stuff out. But there you go. Now you have my opinions, and I'll look at another face. It was hiding. It had no makeup on it. So all you got to see was all the lumps and bumps and stuff that I've got going on over here. Autoimmune sucks. And this is the first day in a while I've felt up to filming. Fibro sucks. Chronic pain sucks. My hands are finally starting to recover from pushing through to get to the end of writing. However, I still have some more stuff to write yet for school and start my edit. It's the way it is. Anyway, tell me what you think of the look. Tell me what you think of the, the opinions on writing. Yes, I will let you know if and when my book actually goes to publication. And then I'll kind of set up a sort of schedule for when... The next one should be out. I'm actually kind of working on the edit for the first one while taking a break and working on the story for the second one. So, whenever I can't edit anymore, I go work on the other story. There you go. Be good.